Can you believe it's been a full year since we first laid eyes on the Samsung Gear 360? And a lot happens in a year. There's been so many new cameras come out over the 2016-2017 period. And a question on many people's minds is, does the Gear 360 still hold its own in 2017? So coming from someone that owns almost every single 360 camera out there, other than the Nikon Key Mission, which has received appalling reviews, which is why I haven't bought it, I have a pretty good understanding of what various cameras are offering and how they compare to our old friend, the Samsung. And I only picked up the Samsung myself about a month ago because I'm on iPhone and I never really could justify getting it. However, once I got it, I was amazed at how long it had taken me to discover this amazing camera. This is probably the best 360 camera I own at the moment. And I own all of them, like I said, all of the consumer 360 cameras, and here's why. Firstly, I'll start with the design. I really like the design of it. I like that you can remove the legs. That's a really handy feature that no other camera offers. It's really handy having that tripod there to begin with because with almost all 360 cameras, the lenses are protruding and they're very likely to get damaged if you drop it. So I've destroyed four Ricoh Thetas and that is not a cheap camera to replace. So you, yes, you can put your camera on a tripod or a mini tripod, but often they take up too much space in your 360 photo. So that's why I like the simplicity of this small one here. And because it's a standard quarter inch tripod thread, male and female, you can attach other accessories to it. So often I will attach my selfie stick to the Gear 360 and it just goes on like that. And that is a really awesome feature. And then I can put the legs on the bottom and there you go, it's a camera on a stick. And the presence is almost invisible underneath you can't see that, so that's a really cool feature. I wish more 360 cameras had detachable legs. Sometimes I found they have ended up in my final shot when they've been spread out that far, so it's not always ideal, but it's still an improvement upon all the other 360 cameras. I really like the simplicity of it. There are only three buttons, one, two, three, and this is actually one of the only 360 cameras to have a display so you can navigate through the menu. Often you see the buttons, but there's no display to accompany them. So it's kind of guesswork until you connect to the app and that can be a very, very fiddly process. Whereas here you get direct feedback and you can see all of your settings and all the various different modes. I like using the Gear 360 in self-timer mode. So all I need to do is just press the button there and then it starts counting down from five. And you have five seconds to set up the shot. That's a really cool thing. Um, and it's actually easier to use than the other cameras in terms of self-timer, just because you have that direct feedback and the countdown. One really cool feature of the Gear 360 is automatic leveling. Often it can be hard to get your camera perfectly vertical. Often when you're moving around, um, you don't have a lot of time to set up your camera. You'll end up taking a photo on an angle and then when you look around it on Facebook later on or on your phone, um, the horizon is out of whack and it's quite disorienting. With the Gear 360 and the automatic leveling, I can take a photo completely vertical like this and later on it will level it for me. That is a really cool feature. So no matter which angle you hold your camera and take the photo, it's going to level it. Next we have resolution. The Gear 360 shoots 30 megapixel photos and 4K video. So of all of the consumer 360 dual lens cameras, this is the highest photo resolution and the equal highest video resolution. So this is still one of the top cameras in terms of resolution for both photo and video. Honestly, when I first bought it and I viewed the crispy, beautiful 4K video on my smartphone, I was like, holy shit, how has it taken me so long to get this camera? Because it's so much better than all of the other 360 cameras that do less than 4K. And 4K is essential when you're wrapping a 4K image around a sphere. 4K is kind of the minimum amount of pixels to really get the detail that represents your scene accurately. Otherwise, it's just going to look blurry and look like 480p as opposed to the Gear 360, which looks more like 720p when you look in any individual direction. And here's the part where I was going to show off the amazing Samsung Gear VR headset and how you can view your 360 videos inside of it, but it didn't work. Well, maybe I'm just an idiot, 
but after 10 minutes of fooling around and no action, I gave up. Now you can't talk about any individual 360 camera without addressing the dreaded seam line. My hand, my hand is getting cut off. No, I need this hand, I need to eat and breathe and love. So because 360 cameras have two lenses, you're almost always going to have a gap in between the two where things get cut off. And this is something that you should try and avoid while you're shooting. Just try and avoid the stitch line. Just use common sense. If something is really interesting in front of you, point the front facing lens at it. Don't point the side. If you get too close, this is no matter which 360 camera you use. If you get within about a meter range of the stitch line, you're going to get cut off. It's as simple as that. So while 360 cameras are still new in the grand scheme of things, you just need to be really careful of the seam line. And because of the build of the Gear 360, the lenses are quite far apart, almost the furthest apart out of any of the 360 cameras. So the, the gap between the lenses and the stitching is going to be greater. So if you get really close to it, it's going to be really noticeable. So in terms of the video workflow, I'm a huge proponent of sticking to your smartphone if you can. I have a Galaxy S7 Edge and I can do almost everything I need using my phone and importing my Gear 360 footage to the Collect video app where I can edit 360 video there. I can also turn my footage and photos into tiny planets using Theta Plus and Theta Plus Video for Android. So I try my best to stick to mobile. However, if you do want to do something more advanced, you might want to import your footage to Gear 360 Action Director. If you're on Mac like I am, you'll need to use a program like Smart Switch, which will allow you to plug your Galaxy S7 into, your, into the computer and back it up the same way you would back up footage from a memory card. And then you just simply bring it into Premiere or whichever editor you're going to use. The app is really simple to use. Firstly, you've just got a gallery where you can import your photos and videos, and then you can go over to live view mode. Here you have control over the basic settings, you can change your views and basic exposure, but nothing too fancy, like you can't do long exposures or anything. You can change white balance, you can change a few stops, three stops each way, self timer, resolution, HDR on and off. Something that doesn't really get talked about with this camera is the fact that you can use it as a single lens camera. So this is almost the equivalent of a GoPro. So I've got my camera right here. Um, and as you can see, this isn't actually a 360 now because I just changed it. So it's using the front facing lens um, which is going to act like a GoPro. It's going to get that single view. So videographers, filmmakers, if you need a second normal camera that's not 360, the Samsung can do the job. It's not just a 360 camera. Another awesome thing about this camera is that you can import all of your photos. Let's go save. And then you can turn your phone's screen off Go plug it into the power and it'll do it in the background. With my Theta S, you need to keep the screen on or the, the transfer cancels. So this is really handy. That will save me so much time and frustration of having to always keep my phone screen on. As you can see, it's telling me that it's doing it in the background there. This brings me to the weaknesses of the camera. And the number one complaint I get and I've gotten for the past year is that it is not compatible with iPhone. This is a huge one because I think roughly 60 or 70% of camera users are on iPhone. So it's really a big hassle because it means that most of us can't actually use it without getting a, a Samsung phone. This is something that's going to be addressed with the new Samsung Gear 360, which is coming out soon. However, for the current edition, you need to ask yourself, is this camera worth buying a Samsung phone for so you can operate it? You know what, I did it and my answer is yes it is. It's that good of a camera that I would happily pay $800 total. It's about 200 to 250 for one of these cameras and then maybe five or $600 for a smartphone. Um, I think it's worth it to be honest. The video quality is just that good. That beautiful 4K 360 video is so alluring, I would pay $800 for this camera. So if you're thinking about it, I know it's not ideal and maybe you do wanna wait for the next Samsung Gear 360. But for those of you who have been tempted by the idea of getting a Samsung phone as well as an iPhone, I'd say definitely consider it. I've got two phones, it's just handy to have. Um, so it's, it's an option. It's not ideal, but it's an option. 
Again, wait for the next Gear 360 if you don't wanna do that. The next weakness is no manual exposure. At the moment, only one 360 camera gives you full manual control of your camera and that's the Theta S. Um, and the Gear 360 doesn't let you do it, unfortunately. This means the camera is not good in low light. You can't do a long exposure photo and I wouldn't even bother taking it out at night time to be honest because it's going to be so dark and grainy that the footage is going to be unusable. So if you're into shooting at night time, this probably is not the camera for you. I'd go for the Theta. At this point, no 360 camera is ideal at night time for 360 video. The sensors just aren't good enough. You can't get your ISO high enough. So that's not really an option. Try to stick to daytime shooting if you can. So even though a full year has passed, has the Gear 360 become irrelevant? I say hell no. This is one of the best, if not the best 360 camera money can buy at the moment. So if you can get your hands on one, I'd absolutely recommend it. If you are on Android, this camera is a no brainer. You must buy this camera. Just stop paying rent, stop eating, stop buying presents for your girlfriend or boyfriend and buy this damn camera because this is gonna change your life. It delivers way more value than the tiny 200 and something dollar price tag. So absolutely get one if you're on Android. And again, iPhone users consider it a $750 or $800 investment. With that said, yes, the new Gear 360 will be coming out very soon and it looks amazing. I can't wait to get my hands on it. However, some of the specs aren't as good as this Gear 360. So you will wanna still consider this one. It has better photo resolution, higher resolution video than the new one that's coming out. Essentially, the new one will be like the Theta SC is to the current Theta S. It's like a cheaper version um, that is an attempt to get more people on board with Samsung's brand. All right, guys, I'll put a link in the description to where you can find the Gear 360 on Amazon. Get it for 200 and something dollars. That is a bargain. I spend that much on coffee every week. So until next time, keep living your life in 360. And once you own a 360 camera like this one, you wanna check out my ebook. It's called Life in 360, A Beginner's Guide to Tiny Planet Photography. And it'll teach you everything you need to know about this really cool photography style called Tiny Planet Photography. I think it'll help you out. All right guys, peace.